Hey Ellis Fam Lifers and welcome back to the channel. I have really big news. This is the video where I tell you that I am taking a break. And if you'd like to know more, then stay tuned. Hey Ellis Fam Lifers and thank you for joining us. As I mentioned in this video, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is I'm going to take a break. The good news is it's not gonna be a long break and I'm going to focus on several things this summer. I need a little bit of clear my mind time in order to do them. Most of you know that we have Alex and Will, a set of nonverbal autistic twins who are, as of tomorrow, are turning five years old. And there are lots of things that I'd like to get done this summer. And typically in the summertime, I get projects done, which I know most of you are probably like that. I like to get all of the clothes organized. I like to go through their room and get it cleaned out. And there's a couple of other projects that I'd like to work on, including cleaning out the spare bedroom, possibly doing some painting in the spare bathroom, one of the many spare bathrooms. <laughs> I need to do things. I need to clean out the basement. There's some stuff that I need to get rid of. And you know, just the stuff that you normally save for summertime. And the most important thing is I want to swim with the twins. The pool is cl clear and ready and blue and inviting and cool and wet and I really want to get in the pool with the boys. A lot of you know, and I didn't talk a lot about it, but this June is a big month for us. Yesterday was the anniversary of my mom's death, and I purposefully did not do anything yesterday except hang out with my sister and hang out with my sister. We did random domestic things like food prep we went grocery shopping and we just spent time together we got a little bit in the pool she spent the whole weekend at my house and i had worked friday night into saturday so i slept most of saturday and then got up and we watched chernobyl which i'll give you a little review of that in just a second but yesterday was the actual day I kept a pretty low profile because number one, I didn't really want to think about it and I didn't want to dwell on it. And it's the second anniversary of her death. Well, I am sad, but I feel a lot better than I did a year ago. And I feel a lot better than I expected to feel. I thought that I would be more sad, but we stayed busy and we did like fun, easy things like food prep. And we grilled a whole bunch of vegetables. I food prepped for the week and and it was a good day. It was hot and humid and we spent time with the boys and I was a little bit tired because anytime I work night shift, I you know, you kind of you kind of drag for a couple of days after. But I'm better today and I I processed it better than I thought I would and I wasn't nearly as sad. Uh, I decided not to work or do anything for the, the days before and the days following. So the last time I worked was Friday night into Saturday, slept on Saturday, Sunday, yesterday was the anniversary of her death. And then today I'm not doing anything except like cleaning up poop and cleaning the kitchen, that kind of thing, just domestic duties. And I go back to work tomorrow night. I'm going to do two night shifts in a row, but it was a good day and way better than I thought it would be. And I was really glad for her because I didn't want her to work either because she made the mistake of working last year on the first anniversary of mom's death and it affected her very badly. We all kind of decided, hey, we're not going to work. We're just going to hang out. And if we want to watch a movie, we're going to watch a movie. If we want to just do nothing, we're going to do nothing. We're going to, and yesterday we wound up grocery shopping and food prepping, which was great. We got something done and we hung out and it was really fun. So, and we kind of <laughs> laughed and said, okay, mom, we love you and we miss you. And we are food prepping in your honor <laughs> and we're thinking about you. So anyway, now I'm going to cry. So anyway, I miss my mother and... We had a good day. It was a good, easy day. And it hits you at random times. Um, Mother's Day wasn't really that bad, but her birthday was, and her birthday's in February. And Christmas was absolutely horrible. Even, and it was the second Christmas, not the first. But it will just hit you at random times. And it can be not even an anniversary of anything. It can just be, oh, mom would have really liked that, or whatever. And the further away we get from her death, the more I think that we're forgetting her, which makes me really sad. And at the same time, life goes on. And I think 
wow, she would really love how much the boys have grown and what they're doing now and all the things. So I think it's just how it is when you lose somebody, you you keep processing it and it hits you at odd times and you think to yourself, I don't want to forget this person. So of course I'll never forget my mother. But anyway, we honored her memory yesterday and we did fun things. We did things that she would have enjoyed doing because she so would have come over and like helped us go grocery shopping or you know meandered around Walmart and looked at things like we did we didn't just grocery shop but we like looked for things and just kind of had fun hanging out at Walmart and then food prepping we're a big family of eaters so we like to cook a lot of our family get-togethers center around the food and the kitchen and the table and you know big get-together meals and that kind of thing so I think that she would have enjoyed it anyway I'm not gonna forget my mother but it was a good day and thank y'all for listening as I share the fun things about that and on another note, another big milestone is the boys' birthday tomorrow. And I actually did not want to celebrate it over the weekend because I didn't want to mix it with my mother's anniversary of her death because she died two days before my twins' birthday. Their third birthday? Let's see. One and five, and it was two years ago, so it was their third birthday, and then their fourth birthday, and then, you know, tomorrow. So I didn't want, number one, I was working overnight, and I hate that trying to plan a birthday and trying to plan a birthday and being groggy from lack of sleep. So I told my husband, let's not plan a birthday party until after. So I think we'll do something this this coming up weekend. And honestly, it makes me a little bit sad, but the boys don't really care. <laughs> They're kind of clueless. And the last few weeks and days I've been saying, okay, you'll be five in another month. You're growing up so much. And I say like little encouraging things like that. But I think they understand a little bit, but I don't think they understand like a regular five-year-old would understand, like a neurotypical five-year-old would understand. So I don't know that it really hurts their feelings that we're not going to celebrate their birthday on their birthday. So their birthday's tomorrow and we'll probably sing to them, be happy and tell them it's your birthday, but I don't think we're going to do anything big like a, like a get together until next weekend when we can keep it separate from all the other things that kind of try to take over emotionally. And I know that I'll be in a better place as far as like focusing on them and kind of moving past the anniversary of mom's death and having worked all night and all of that. So anyway, big, another big reason for me to take some time off. I want to celebrate the boys and have people over and plan a party and do all of the things. So anyway, happy birthday to the twins. They will be five years old, five years old tomorrow, June 11th. So I'm really excited about their birthday. So ever since my husband had his back surgery in April, we've been slowly getting to the point where he is getting back to normal and he is finally back to work and feeling okay. He's still kind of trying to take it easy and not do too much. Most of y'all know that we're nurses and it can get a little bit complicated with lifting, pulling, really taking care of people who are not able to bear weight. It's a very physically demanding job. He's slowly getting back to normal. Both of us this summer really wanna focus on getting healthy. I know that most of y'all know that I have done almost everything that you can do with the twins, like as far as like different ways of eating, keto, no sugar, all the things that you can do to have healthy eating. About a year ago, probably the middle of last summer, or really more like October or so, I kinda of just said, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna just eat what I wanna eat. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna worry about the twins. I'm gonna let them eat what they can eat. I'm gonna stop worrying about the vomiting and let them eat the 10 things that they can eat so that they'll quit vomiting all the time. And the CBD helped, but most of y'all know that as well. So I've taken off probably the total of a school year in terms of eating. Although I'm all about body positivity, loving who you are and loving the skin that you're in, I don't like that my clothes are getting tight. And I really wanna take the next month or so and just focus on good, clean eating, good, thoughtful exercise, just being more fit and making it more of a lifestyle choice and making it more about me and my husband and not necessarily about, well, what can the twins eat or what can they, will they eat? So, I, and it's not like I'm gonna, it's not like I'm gonna go and say, well, I'm only gonna feed them 
healthy stuff because I'm going to I'm going to stay with what they can eat, but I'm going to make more of a conscious effort to eat better. You know, healthy, clean eating, more home prepared food, not outside food or processed food and I've kind of we've kind of just taken it easy especially since the surgery and working so much where we've just kind of been like okay just eat whatever and I really feel this uh, it's very necessary for me to get back on track and y'all know how it goes and so the summer is a really good time to do that I've kept a pretty heavy schedule with posting as far as like my Monday videos journal videos and then Wednesdays are rewind Wednesday where I show I pick little moments in their life in the last five years to show you little piece little bits and pieces of their life and then my Saturday video is usually a big video right now we're in the interview series um, I've done a lot of CBD videos educational and reviews uh, good CBD results with the twins um, just different things you know I've kind of settled into this groove of Monday Wednesday Saturday well it's time to back up and slow down a little bit just, I want to just have a few weeks of pondering where I can think about and ponder and really you know, go over in my brain over a long period of time. I like to just sit and dwell on things in a good way, like dwell on, okay, what if I did that for a video? Or what if I did this idea? Or what if I did this series? I need some brain clearing time. And this is a really good time to do it because it's the summertime. We're all gonna just swim and be silly and have fun and maybe go to the zoo. The good news is, I'm not going away completely. I'm just backing down to one video a week and I'm going to finish my interview series with Kim Poston. And the good thing is, y'all are gonna y'all are gonna laugh. We talked for two and a half hours that day. A lot of it was just silly or, you know, I have to edit out some of the, like when we didn't get words out right or whatever. But I have a lot of good material because it took two and a half hours for her to tell the story. And so I've got great material for probably another, it'll probably take about five or six videos for me to break it all down and condense it and get it pretty for the channel. So the good thing is I'm still working on editing that interview. I've got kind of a groove set where I, it's really easy to edit. I'm so excited to share her story and let her share her story that I'm going to keep that going. So I'm not going away completely. I'm just kind of backing off and resting a little bit for the for the next month. My goal is four weeks. We've got a lot of things coming up this summer. My husband is taking the oldest son to England for his senior trip. And they're going with my brother-in-law, my husband's brother. And they're going to do some really fun and exciting things there. And then that leaves me at home with the 15-year-old and the twins. And we're just going to do things like go to the zoo and swim every day because that's what we do in the summer. That gives me a chance to just kind of settle down, get Frank and Frankie off on their trip, get them situated. I love editing so much that I don't think I could give it up completely for a month. So I'm going to work on the interview videos. You'll see them every Saturday for the next probably four weeks. Then that gives me a chance to slow down. And the, the funny thing is I still have so many inner circle ideas in my head, but I want to just focus on the twins for a little while and I'll probably still sit down and make especially inner circle videos as I get the chance and as I think of things because I don't want to lose that train of thought when it hits but that gives me a chance to kind of build up my video repertoire again so that I can stay ahead of my production schedule so to speak I'm excited to say that we're going to take a little break and you'll still see us every Saturday for the next month. I'm kind of leaving it up to how I feel. I may take a little bit longer. I may come back a little bit sooner, but I'll still be here. And I want y'all to make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram because I'll still be on there very regularly posting at least two or three times a week. You can see some progress and some of the things that the twins are doing. And then my goal is sometime middle of July. I'll be back full swing with probably two to three videos a week until then and I'll just be completely refreshed and relaxed and I'm already relaxed just because it's summer but by then hopefully I'll feel a little bit better. I'll feel a little bit more energetic especially with kind of cleaning out my system, eating well and with spending a lot of time in the sun getting some vitamin D therapy, getting settled with my new jobs working my jobs working part-time at two hospitals not one I don't think I told y'all that I have 
gone down to part-time at my current hospital and also am picking up part-time shifts at my old hospital that I worked at before. I'm a proud nurse employee of two hospitals, not one. So I'm kind of happy to see all of my old friends that I haven't seen in three or four years and reconnect with them. That's a really fun job and a completely different atmosphere just because it's a different type of nursing than what I do at the current hospital. So completely different way of thinking as far as like taking care of patients. So I'm kind of excited about it because it's making me think, it's pushing me to think, critically think in different ways than I do at the current hospital. So anyway, my goal is to pick up a shift a week at each place. And if it works out that I pick up more, then sometimes it works out, but that makes it a little easier on our family. And I get some flexibility as far as like, I can pick the shifts. You know, a lot of it boils down to when is a shift available, but at both places, a lot, lots of shifts are available. <laughs> and I find that in the world of nursing, that's how it goes. There's always work in the world of nursing. So it was a good, it was a good career to go into. But anyway, so working part-time at both places, going to send the big people off on their trip to England and going to swim a whole bunch. And so y'all look for me here on the channel, look for me on Saturdays here on the channel, and I'll be releasing sequential parts of our first autism interview along with our presence on Facebook. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at Ellis Fam Life hashtag Autistic Twins and on Instagram Ellis Fam Life underscore Autistic Twins and you'll see a lot more of the fun things that we do. I'll be sure to keep a presence on there. As soon as the middle of July hits, maybe the end of July, I haven't decided, I will be back two to three times per week with more inner circles and who knows, maybe a little skinnier and all my clothes will fit a little better. Not that I want to do any kind of before and afters, but you know, this is just a good time for me to focus on getting healthy. So maybe I'll come back a little skinnier and I know that I'll come back a little browner because we'll have spent some time in the sun. Until then, y'all pay attention to Facebook and Instagram. Thank you all for watching and thank you for all of your support, all of the great comments and keep commenting. You know, I'm still posting videos, so keep commenting. I look so forward to comments and to hearing your stories. So thank you all for watching. And as always, I look forward to next time. Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell y'all. So totally watched Chernobyl two nights ago. That will not leave my mind. That was so intense. So that is my little, let's say a little review and or a little blurb. If you have access to HBO and or you want to try just like the seven day stretch where you get the free free trial for seven days go watch that mini series it was intense and so good we binged it because it's very hard to to stop watching there are five episodes and they fictionalized a little bit of it but they kind of explain what they embellish and the director kind of explains why he did what he did but for the most part they stayed true to the actual story and it's really amazing how close we came to a world apocalypse at that point. And you think <laughs> science fiction meets up with real world because that was real. It really happened and it was really a big deal and it's still a big deal. And I was, if it was 86, I was seven years old. So I barely, it's kind of like when the Challenger exploded, I barely remember it. And my husband says he remembers it better and we're the same age. So yeah, a big deal though. And it was so well put together. The story is so good and it really happened. Prepare your heart because it's very real and it, and it dredges up a lot of emotion of, wow, it could have got, it could have gone a lot worse than it did. And we were providentially spared. The whole world was providentially spared a lot, even though we still, especially Russia had a lot to deal with when the when the explosion happened and there's still there's still repercussions even 33 years later today of the the situation and what happened but y'all go watch Chernobyl it was really good and it's one of those rare mini series shows videos movies that won't leave you alone like I still think about it two days later like kind of just analyzing it and processing it so really good show y'all go watch it and if you watch it or if you have watched it leave me a comment below and let me know what you think i know it has nothing to do with the world of autism but 
since I've taken a little break and it's still sitting on my brain two days later after we've watched it, I really want to know what y'all think. So if you've watched it and or you go watch it, then let me know what you think. Thank y'all for watching and you know I look forward to next time.